Okay. I'm Mike Clasco from Menlo Scientific. We're from California. We're an audio engineering consulting company that focuses on new materials for audio stuff like headphones and speakers and earphones. Uh, what we're showing today is predominantly for headphone manufacturers. This is a 40% wood powder polypropylene. If you were trying to do this out of regular plastic, you would get huge sink marks because of the thermal mass of the plastic. The wood doesn't pick up any heat, so you can do really thick wall construction, not for headphones, but if, even if you wanted to do a subwoofer enclosure, this would work. Uh, more petite stuff, like this one, is for a typical plastic product. And again, this is 40% uh, wood flour and 60% polypropylene. These are some ear tips, not the ear cushions, but the ear shells that are the same thing, uh, a high content of cellulose wood, and that causes it to resonate less. Usually, when you have acoustic echo cancellation, you have active noise reduction, you have something that's getting acoustic feedback with full duplex, like a speakerphone. It's at the peaks of the response where the plastic is resonating that sets off the failure of the acoustic echo cancellation. Or if you looked at the ANC curve, it's usually pretty nasty. When you use this material, a lot of the issues go away. Now, it doesn't fix your driver, but in this case, this is a a 40 millimeter driver where they're using this is the frame because for, ac ac for uh, active noise cancellation there's so much excursion and vibration when you're in a jet plane that it's doing all the work canceling even before it gets to the audio and that shakes up the driver <coughs> it causes resonances and this thing helps keep the thing very very stiff and yet the cost of it is 10% more than the typical polypropylene or polycarbonate, much less than nylon. Moving along in plastics, this is a unique chemical vapor deposition process of adding a heavy layer of metal onto a piece of plastic. And there's different finishes you can get, and actually different metals that can be deposited. This is not like a silver hot stamp that wears away after a few months. This is a, a permanent metal finish. It doesn't flake off. And if you're trying to do a headphone and you don't want the weight of magnesium or aluminum, let alone stainless steel, it lets you stick to your plastic tooling and put it through a secondary chemical vapor deposition process. Uh, other new materials we have, this is from BASF Liquid Fleece. This uh, is an example of a bike seat, a motorcycle seat, but no normally it would be used in a headphone, and it would go on the inside diameter, and it soaks up 200 times its weight in heat and moisture. And it's a two-phase material. When you take this thing off, it very quickly dumps the heat. So if you're on a 10-hour flight, or you're on a listening binge, uh, or you work in a recording studio, or you're exercising with your headphones on, this is wonderful. Uh, what else do we have? These are some new materials from Eastman Chemical. Those are the guys that used to own Kodak. They got smart and sold off the camera business. And uh, those are copolymers, which is similar to other types of plastics, except that uh, unlike polycarbonate or ABS or polypropylene, it's medical grade. So if you have a hearing aid or an earphone or a headphone and it's in constant contact with your head or a Bluetooth product, there's no BPAs, no plasticizers in there. And uh, as they learn more and more about plasticizers, they get more and more worried about it. There's an opportunity to switch over. And of the, they have uh, Triton, which is the BPA-free. In the middle, the, the one that's more smoky is Trevia, which is 20% cellulose loading, which is sort of a biocomposite. And again, you get the better acoustics in that. And then you have a very soft, gummy version Neostar, the milky white one, which uh, if you had a headphone, you could sort of minimize your hinge movement. But you'd have to specifically design for that. The last thing we represent is the most state-of-the-art bleeding edge. 
and that's the pure graphene diaphragm that was developed at UC Berkeley Lawrence lab. It's not like the stuff from Canada where they throw in some graphene oxide into a regular speaker or diaphragm. This is an electrostatic earphone, electrostatic microphone with a pure graphene diaphragm. If you were to, if I was to take it out and you blow on it, you'd never catch it. It's just, uh, it's lighter than air. You gotta be careful when it's assembled. Once it's assembled into a product, it's fine. Gets about 10 dB better symptom noise ratio than a regular MEMS mic. And that's what you're going to need for you're sitting on the couch and want to change the channel on your TV and the TV's blaring. You're gonna need a mic with about 75 dB. MEMS is struggling to hit 70. So.